<clears throat> hey everybody, Steve Rider Too Brief. I'm just finishing doing a water change. Thought I'd stream it live. Whoever joins us, talk amongst yourselves. For those of you who are watching later, check out the comments on the right hand side of the video during the live stream. Don't forget to check us out at rider2brief.com. Also, the Facebook group, a lot of cool people. No jackass is allowed, or they're banned instantly. Uh, what else? Check out steverodder.com. I'm also a writer. I like to write about tech and music and gear. A lot of cool things too. So check that out, steverodder.com. Also, don't forget to check out all the links in the video description for all the equipment I use in saltwater aquarium care. All right. So hope you guys are doing well. I just did a water change. I'm going to be scraping off the back of the glass. You know what that is? Coraline algae. So once I scrape that off into the water column, it's going to flow through the water column, and those spores are going to propagate and attach themselves to rocks, turning these rocks to deep purple again. My tank used to be such deep purple because of that coralline algae. I love coralline algae. Love the purple rock. All right, so let's get started. First, I'm gonna replace the foam in my rod or tube. I'll show you guys how to do that. It's something I designed. You can get this at Steve Rod, I'm sorry, at rodertubebrief.com. Basically, it's a three inch clear PVC tube. The water flows down through the overflow, catches all the stuff, much like a canister filter. And are, you know, I don't use some socks anymore. I just use these. I gotta buy some new foam. So you're just going to put this in there. I'm going to cut it to size. This is part of the weekly water maintenance. This is all I have left. i got to order more. There's also links to this in the video description. I need one twice as long. <clears throat> That's what she said. Sorry, has to be done. Has to be said. So this is going to be a little too long, so I'm going to cut this other guy. And this lasts quite a while. I don't wash anything. You could wash these. I just throw them away, as you'll see. So I'm going to get the garbage can ready. Watch how fast this is. going to do this. First, let me get the glove on, because I don't put my hands in the tank anymore after I had that bacterial staph infection. I'm never putting my hands in the tank again, because I had cuts on my hands, and bacteria got in there, and I had problems. So let me just knock this rider right tube out. So you see how that attaches right to the overflow? Take this off. I've got different um, ends. I just put this one on temporarily. Okay, oops, it fell off. And see all the nastiness it catches? You're done. I'm gonna put the new one in there. If you're interested in one of these three inch PVC Waste catchers, the rotter tube, you can get them at rottertubebrief.com. Put it in, you're done. Put it back in. I can never see where the line is. Up. There we go. There we go, it's in now. Water will flow back through the overflow. Let's turn the pumps on. You'll see how it works. I turn everything off when I'm doing a water change. Tanks filling back up. Water's coming through this overflow. The detritus and all that solids are getting caught by the rotter tube. 
and then in four or five days I'll just take the other foam out, throw it away, replace it. See, no cleaning, no mess, no fuss, no muss. That's it. And you throw the nasties in the garbage can from the yuck, and you're done. Hate sump socks. Not to mention sump socks. They sit in the water column in your sump. What's the point of it catching all that garbage, fish waste, and uneaten food if the sump sock's going to sit in your water column? What good is that? Plus a little bit of water that's coming out of the rotter tube. Um, it helps to oxygenate the water because it's touching air for a moment. Does it clog? No, it doesn't clog. It's a three inch PVC. You can see how much is coming out and how much space is left. Okay, now that we got that done, let me uh, scrape the back of this tank. I have my protein skimmer turned off, by the way, because I put some uh, phytoplankton in the tank. I want it to circulate through. I don't want it to get caught up. All this back here. It's coralline algae. I'm going to scrape it off. Okay, once I scrape that off, this is an awesome tool by the way, you can get this on Amazon, check out all the links in my video descriptions. This stuff's been on the back for a while, it's nice to see coralline algae again, I'm going to scrape it off and let it just flow through the water column, so over time it'll populate on these rocks. See all that stuff coming off, it's going to float through the tank, land on the rocks. and grow. That's going to be awesome. To get coralline algae in your tank, you want to have good water parameters and you want to maintain your calcium at like 500 to 550. I'm not going to try and get it perfect, I just want to get these spores floating through the water. So glad that green hair algae has gone. I'm so sick of looking at it. I nailed it. The hydrogen peroxide I used, check out the videos on that. Green algae was gone in three days. Three days. Flucanazole did nothing for this tank. Water changes helped, but green hair algae always came back. Hydrogen peroxide kills mold, uh, kills algae, kills fungus. I destroyed the hell out of that stuff, man. Just by having it in the water column, dosing one milliliter of 35% hydrogen peroxide food grade for every 10 gallons of tank water, Gone. Dead. So awesome. So nice looking at a clear tank again. It's good enough for now. Okay. There you go. And... Keep the phosphates at bay like i said before i've got a phosphate reactor little tiny pump sucks up the water goes through the phosphate reactor the gfo catches it and traps the phosphates in there and then the clean water phosphate free gets poured out also i got a new rodi unit which is registering completely zero um, phosphates and that's it. I put another rod or tube on the other side here because right now I just have this return pump catching no solids, right? So I want to put another rod or tube fastened with PVC here. And uh, so I'll be catching solids with the rod or tube over here. And then phosphates will be taken care of with that dude. You got the rod or tube over here, as you've seen. 
taking care of the salads and then I got the protein skimmer. That's all I got. That's all I got. That's all the sump is. Corals are looking good. Star polyps are a little quiet. Fish are looking great. Everyone's hiding out because I'm cleaning the tank. Mandarin Gobi's doing well. Ah, he always hides when I bring out the camera. Check this out, guys. Ever since I got rid of my sand bed, Look at the overflow here, this clean. Can you see that? Look how clean that is. When I had a sand, I just noticed that now, when I had a sand bed, I was constantly scrubbing and brushing and all this crap. It, it looks like a new, it, I have not cleaned that. I also attribute that to the hydrogen peroxide. It clears all the fungus and nastiness. I mean, look at this. Look how clean that is. I had gunk and garbage and slime. Now I got nothing on there. It's great. So there it is, 125 gallon tank. Just did another water change. Fish are doing great. Hydrogen peroxide, 35%. Food grade completely wiped out the green hairy algae. Fish are doing great. Everyone's doing cool. Um, I used three times the amount. It made me a little nervous, to be honest, but um, fish never were affected. No one got affected. It just took the corals like four or five days to open up. Star polyps are slowly coming back. But they're doing good. Every, everything's doing great. Um, the zoanthids, I got a little nervous, but they're awesome. After four days, they were just, as, just how they were because the hydrogen peroxide, it's different in the water column, but you want to get food grade, totally organic nothing added i've got a link to that in the video description i'll also put it in the top comment and the video description here and uh it, it just works great you know 35 percent hydrogen peroxide it's the only thing that worked for me completely annihilated the green hair algae i can't praise that stuff enough i had green hair algae insane amounts of it for four months so that's it i'm gonna feed these guys so as i always like to do during live stream thanks for joining me uh the handful of you that are i know it's saturday really gloomy and crappy here in chicago but that's my favorite type of day so let me get some rods food and i'll feed these guys right now i'll turn the pumps off Alright, I got some rods food, frozen rods food. Don't rinse off the rods food. I won't put the gloves on to feed the guys. But I made sure I don't have cuts on my hands. Fish love this, the corals love this. Breathing life back into the tank after the nasty green hair algae outbreak. There you go, they ate. Tank's looking really good. It'll look better after the water clears from my little water change but you know what I got no sand in here so 
the first five gallons I removed just now. Um, look at the sail fin. They're going to town on that piece of shrimp, frozen shrimp, um, from Rod's Food. So the second five gallon I removed, I did a 10 gallon water change. It was like really clear because there's no sand. So the detritus, which is fish waste and uneaten food, it doesn't get trapped anywhere. It just keeps circulating through the tank and out the tank through the rotter tube and the protein skimmer. And the water has been like clear when I do a water change for the most part. When I had a sand bed, and I do kind of miss the sand bed, but this is okay. Um, to be honest, man, it's like the water was like brown, you know? When you do that water change, it's like the dark yellow brown. So I might get one bag of sand, like a five-pound bag, just to put a little dusting of sand. Because you see I've got a little, mostly glass, but I also got a little dusting of sand see so I'm thinking either do like a tiny little dusting of sand just for a look and it won't be enough to trap anything or you go deep sand bed because then you've got a lot of life living in that sand bed and it's gonna break down the nitrates and everything but I had like a one and a half inch to two inch sand bed max in some places mostly it was a one inch one and a half inch sand bed it wasn't doing anything for me with all these fish. I think with the larger bio load, you either have to have no sand bed or just a little thin layer of it so all that fish waste gets blown around by your power heads here and gets put out through your tank, through your filtration. Otherwise, your sand is just capturing that stuff. Then you got to get a cleanup crew. And let's face it, you need a lot of cleanup crew. Cleanup crew is like snails and shrimps and... Um, crabs and they don't do that good of a job cleaning the sand bed and eating all the fish waste and uneaten food you need a big cleanup crew that's more expense then when those guys die they're gonna release nitrates and death in the tank so i'm just gonna keep like a maybe get a five pound bag of sand and just like put it in there for looks i think that'd be pretty cool and if you see some glass once in a while so be it that way i'm gonna focus on my corals and my fish and get the rock a deep purple I think that'd be really nice. Plus, I want a deep sand bed, but if you go with a deep sand bed, you're going to take away some of the swimming space from the fish. I'd love to have a four inch sand bed, but then you're taking them. Look how close they're swimming to the bottom. That's going to be gone then. So I might just get a five pound bag from like Marine Depot or Bulk Reef Supply of the live sand just, just for a little bit of a look, you know? That's my plan. That's my plan. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and thank you for your support. Leia, come here, Mimi. There's the little beast. Hey, you sweetie. Leia, come. Come. Hi, babe. Not such a little beast anymore. It's a big babe. There she goes. You guys remember when she was eight weeks old, the size of a toaster? Now she's like 68 pounds. So... Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Saturday or whenever I feel like making a video. Take care, everybody. Happy reefing.